Good day everyone. Let's try to answer the math problem of the week of Assistant Academy. And let's start. Here's the question. Given this figure, our goal is to find the measure of angle alpha. Now, if you want to try this problem, just pause this video right now. And if you're ready, here's the solution. And I hope you pause this video. Now, let's see if you got the correct answer. To answer this problem, what we're going to do is to let this point as point D. This is point E. And without the loss of generality, let the side AB be equals to 1. And the reason is, because if we enlarge or squeeze this figure, the side length of this triangle change but not the angle. Therefore, we can set any side length for side AB, whatever we want. Alright? Now, our plan to solve this kind of problem is to use trigonometry. This is a 100% sure solution. So, let's start. First thing to do is to consider this triangle. Now, we know that the angle inside the triangle adds up to 180 degrees. We have now 50 degrees, 30 degrees. It follows that the remaining angle must be 100 degrees. Now, vertical angles are congruent. Therefore, this angle must be also 100 degrees. Next, we have a straight angle because we have a straight line. And the straight angle measures 180 degrees. Since we have 100 degrees, it follows that this angle must be 80 degrees. And again, vertical angles are congruent, therefore the other angle must be 80 degrees. Now, consider this triangle on the bottom. We have an angle 20 degrees and 80 degrees. It follows that the other angle or the remaining angle must be 80 degrees or a total of 180 degrees. Similarly, on the triangle on the top, we have 30 degrees 80 degrees, a total of 110 degrees, therefore the remaining angle must be 70 degrees. Now at this point, let this side be equals to A. Now we will use the law of sines to get the value of this side A. Now we will use a triangle having an angle of 30 degrees, 50 degrees, and 100 degrees. Again, in trigonometry, the law of sines, sine law, sine formula, or sine rule, is an equation relating the lengths of the side of a triangle, any shape, to the sines of its angle. Now, if we use sine law to this triangle, we have A, this is side A, over sine of 50 degrees must be equal to 1 over sine of 100 degrees. Now, solve for A and we get that A must be equal to sine 50 degrees all over sine of 100 degrees. Now, we can use approximate value of this side A, but our goal is to find the exact value of this angle alpha. Therefore, we will use the exact value of this side A. Therefore, keep in mind that side A or the length of this side A must be equal to sine 50 degrees all over sine of 100 degrees. Now, let's move on. Let this side length be equal to B. Again, we will use the law of sines. If we do that, we get B, this is side B, all over sine of 30 degrees must be equal to 1 over sine of 100 degrees. Now, solve for B and we get that the value of B must be equal to sine 30 degrees all over sine of 100 degrees. Again, we use the exact value of this side B. We have sine 30 degrees all over sine of 100 degrees. Now, let's move on. How about this side? Let this side be equal to C. Now, we will use the triangle having an angle of 20 degrees, 80 degrees, and 80 degrees. Now, applying sine law, we have C, we have side C, all over sine of 80 degrees, must be equal to side A, all over sine of 80 degrees. Now, take note that this triangle is also an isosceles triangle. Therefore, side A must be equal to side C. Therefore, C must be equal to sine 50 degrees all over sine of 100 degrees. Next, let this side length be equal to D. 
Now, we will use now the triangle having an angle of 30 degrees, 80 degrees, and 70 degrees. Again, we will use sine law. So, we have D all over sine of 80 degrees must be equal to B, whatever it is, all over sine of 70 degrees. Now, solve for side D, we get that D must be equal to B multiplied by sine of 80 degrees all over sine of 70 degrees. Now, keep in mind that side D must be equal to B times sine of 80 degrees all over 70 degrees. Now, at this point, we're almost done. We only need three more sides. So, the next side must be, let this side length be equal to E. Now, we will use, again, sine law to solve for the exact value of this side E. If we do that, we get E, this is side E, all over sine of 30 degrees, the opposite angle, must be equal to side B, all over sine of 70 degrees. Now, solving for side E, we get that E must be equal to B multiplied by sine 30 degrees, all over sine of 70 degrees. Now, again, keep in mind that E must be equal to B times sine 30 degrees, all over 70 degrees degrees. Next, let this side length be equal to F. Now, we will use again this triangle on the bottom part having an angle of 20 degrees, 80 degrees, and 80 degrees. Using sine law, we get that F, side F all over sine of 20 degrees, the opposite angle, must be equal to side A all over sine of 80 degrees. It follows that side F must be equal to A multiplied by sine 20 degrees all over sine of 80 degrees. Now keep in mind that F must be equal to A times sine 20 degrees all over sine of 80 degrees. For the last time, this is the last side and we're almost done. Let this side length be equal to G. Now, we don't use sine law in this case because we don't have enough angle in this triangle. But don't forget that we have the cosine law. And the cosine law states that the square of a side of a plane triangle equals the sum of the squares of the remaining sides minus twice the product of those sides and the cosine of the angle between them. Now notice that we have side E and side F and the angle between those sides is also given which is 100 degrees. Therefore, we can solve the value of side G. Now using cosine law, we have G squared equals e squared plus f squared minus 2 times ef times cosine of 100 degrees. It follows that psi g must be equal to the square root of e squared plus f squared minus 2 times ef plus cosine of 100. Now this is the exact value of psi g. Now keep in mind that g must be equal to the square root of e squared plus f squared minus 2 ef times cosine of 100. Now at this point, we are now ready to find the measure of this angle alpha. Now as you can see, we have the given side and the opposite angle is unknown and we have psi g, we know the value of psi g and we have the opposite angle which is 100 degrees. So again, we can use sine law. If we do that, we get sine of angle A. I will use the reciprocal form because I want to solve for the angle alpha. So we have sine of angle alpha all over side F, this is the opposite side, must be equal to sine of 100 degrees all over side G, the opposite side of 100 degrees. Now, multiply F both sides and we get that sine of angle alpha must be equal to F multiplied by sine of 100 degrees all over G. We want the measure of angle alpha. Therefore, we need to take the arc sine both sides. If we do that, we get that angle alpha must be equal to arc sine of F times sine of 100 degrees all over side G. We want the exact value of angle alpha. Therefore, we will use the exact value of side F and side G. Now, what is side F? Side F must be equal to A times sine of 20 degrees all over 80 degrees. How about side A? Side A must be equal to sine 50 degrees all over sine of 100 degrees. So we can substitute all those values in our calculator over the value of G, which is equal to the square root of E squared plus F squared minus 2EF times cosine of 100 degrees. 
Now, if we plug in all those values in our calculator, we get an answer of this is the exact value of angle alpha, which is equal to 40 degrees. And for those who got 40 degrees, you are absolutely correct. And as always, we're done.